the soul of the planet. So, I'm thankful to meet the family. It's a family reunion. Just some coming from, you know, all over the world. And that's what time it is. That family reunion that we've been waiting on is here. And the energy and all the prosperity and love is going to continue to manifest. So, we're going to introduce our brothers and sisters here as we go. So my first speaker that I'm going to bring forth is my brother that has been assisting me in, my, in, in, in everything that I've been doing in Ghana in terms of health festivals and business conference and uh, healing. Uh, I mean, if I say he's been my right-hand man, trust me, you know, like Bumani say, sometimes the road gets rough, but you know, we need those soldiers that you can depend on. So I can depend on Dr. Asari. Let's greet Dr. Asari. Greetings, everybody. Greetings. You know, when I was in secondary school, we had a very nice essay. And the name of the title was The Advantages of the Mosquito. <laughs> the blessing the mosquito has given to West Africa. You know, when there are problems at the place where you are being suppressed, I think it's a blessing, right? Right. Yeah. Because you don't have a choice. It now forces you to go back home. Like you are in the bush, those of us who come from the villages, and you are being chased by an animal. The first thing you do is to set your eyes back home. Mm -hmm. And please get this from me. You don't stop running because whenever you stop running, the animal behind you will get you. So you don't get tired. And that's just what Pumani and uh, Brother Beda said. The road will be rough, but you still have to get going until you are finally in the same heaven. And there's no place safer than in the bosom of your home. No matter what you are, where you come from, if you are an African, you are still an African. You can be on the continent, you can be across the Atlantic, you can be from the islands, you are still an African. So please set your eyes straight, come back home. This is home. You are safer here than any other place. The last thing they are calling a pandemic, I know all of us who have studied Pan African history know that by the mystic orders of the world, it's a punishment to the wicked. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. So please come back home. If you are being told to come back home and you don't listen, you'll get some slaps. <laughs> and I, I don't think you want to get those slaps. The little knock on your head that you think is a problem, it's not a problem, it's a reminder. Mm -hmm. It's just like a baby crawling towards fire and you tell him, don't go. So you give him a little spunk at the back. Come on, you're going to hurt yourself. That's what we are seeing as problems. They are not problems. They are little knocks that are going to move us from the wrong path onto the right path. And the right path is all the direction that is leading you back home to safety. You are welcome. I have been with the bay on this course for a very, very long time. How many years now? Um, since 2003. Yes. <laughs> we have worked on this because we know Africa and all Africans belong to one universal nation. 
without borders. And that nation is the great African nation without a geographical boundary. So if you really believe in it, you can come. But you know what? We are gradually, the world is getting out of the period of acquisition of knowledge. Right now, if you even call a word like prekese in the Ghanaian language, you can Google it and find it. Our head is no longer to be used as a warehouse for storing useless knowledge. We are entering the period of history where we need creativity and then the implementation of the knowledge we have already. Mystically, I can consult my great-grandfather who is dead so many years ago if I need a certain information. If you want to know how, consult me. We are no longer interested in acquiring a lot of language, a lot of facts, which most of the times are not facts. They are just jumbled of information. How many teeth has a dog? Who discovered the river Niger? And we worry ourselves in school for that. And you get, oh, you know, my child did well. He gets all A's. What have you done with that A? And we are still borrowing from our presence. And we call ourselves educated. Even miseducation is a very small word. We are worse than being miseducated. How can community health nurses in Ghana not know the use of a leaf like Nunu or Wintian? And they will still be waiting for their toll to come from Europe before they can disinfect. Oh my goodness. Do you call this education? <laughs> Anytime your strength is dependent on what somebody will help you or lead you to do, you are a slave. The greatest strength comes from within you. We are not just going to wallow in the happiness of how Africans were great some years ago. How are we great now? We should not be wallowing in past glory. We must take it as a foundation to build upon a future for generations yet to come. As I stand here, I have more formulas than all the 50 institutes of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research put together. As an individual, I have 256 formulas and still counting. And anybody who works with me knows that you cannot work with me for more than 10 minutes without knowing at least some five herbs. Yes. And this, I think, is complete knowledge. So if we are coming back home, we should come back home and try as much as possible to unlearn some of the bad things we have been taught and we think it makes us superior and also to use the advantage of the disadvantaged history. Some of our brothers and sisters are there, they have been able to get some technology that we need now to build Africa. That's fine. But come and inculcate the cultural aspect of yourself as Africans to be able to use that. Why are we having a lot of mining engineers in the US, the Caribbean, and everything, and we get foreigners coming to take our gold, and our government sign contracts with them, 
so that they take 92% and the country takes 8%. The problem is with our technologies. Yeah. Yes, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora, please come. The greatest wealth on earth is not the currency. The greatest wealth on earth is how to use these brains to set yourself free and to chart the path of total freedom of living for posterity. How will you be remembered 70 years after you are dead and gone? Is that the house you have built? That is, the architecture itself would have been useless. Is that the car you are riding? That car would have looked at something bad. So please, we are welcoming you here so that we put together the cultural knowledge of the continent and the technical knowledge from the world together to build a better African home for all of us to reside. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Again, I'm really thankful for Dr. Sari because, as you all know, our health is our greatest wealth. So if you're going to come to Africa, um, you have to overcome um, the poison that they have, that they call food. And you got to learn these herbs and be strong. So that's what I do. I take these herbs. I mostly eat raw food. I've been a vegan for over 30 years. And I don't believe in dying because I was taught to die, but now I'm taught to live. So we got to learn how to reverse that foolishness. Here we go. We got our sisters. Huh? <laughs> we got three beautiful sisters. Wise goddess. Okay? And um, they, they, you know, where would we be without our goddess, our black queen, our mother's creation? Where would we be? Uh, so I'm going to start with one of the sisters I've been working with for years, Dr. Kanita. She's a psychologist, author, fitness coach, master teacher, networker, and she always brings wonderful, wonderful blessings to this conference. Let's welcome Dr. Kanita. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here. Bomani, I just was talking about you the other day behind your back. And I was telling somebody how awesome you were, and I'm like, this brother just, he just takes a licking and keeps on ticking. It's just beautiful. I don't know how to take all this abuse, but appreciate Man, it. a shout out to you. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. And Brother David, thank you too. Uh, I know these things are not easy, but you make it look easy. And I'm standing next to you looking, and you make it look easy, so it's beautiful. So, you know, when we come to Ghana, we repatriate. We're not always aware of the baggage that we bring with us. We're not always aware of the psychological injury that we have and the biases and the uh, arrested development that we have, oftentimes trapped in us on a cellular level. And it's not until you do something specifically that will eradicate that out of your system. Uh, if you do nothing about it, you will experience some relief, but you will not experience full relief. It's just the way it is. It's the nature of the beast. And so I want to admonish you to put some intentional and strategic thought into your psychological care when you come here, before you come here, and after you've been here for a while, so that it doesn't poison your best efforts and interfere with rejuvenative sleep. Now, I noticed in the program, there's a section here that says business ideas in Ghana. And because of the type of platform that I have, as well as some of the books that I published, I want to add to that list. Now, what I've just sat down this evening and jotted down, of course, is not an exhaustive list. And I hope you have your pens and pencils ready I also hope that it provokes other ideas in you as well. So let me give you the list of some other business ideas that I think would be very, very good for you to invest yourself in one way or another. And speaking of investments, you should know by now or you will soon know that you cannot come to Ghana and invest as though you are investing somewhere in the States. It's a different ball game. It's a different dynamic. You need to structure. You need to put benchmarks. You need to put safeguards. 
you need to put specific steps throughout the entire process. Just because a person may be able to hold a, an investment conversation with you doesn't mean that that is their competency. And it doesn't mean that economically they know how to organize your investment in their business in such a way that they can give you a return. It's not always out of uh, someone being nefarious. Sometimes it's out of naivete. And so the onus is on you to put those safeguards in place. So here are some ideas that I want to share. S solar panel repair. Mm -hmm. Service industry. And that includes things like setting up something like Fiverr and TaskRabbit task for the average working person. Not the high level, college level, but just the average everyday Joe. Fiverr and TaskRabbit. With all the accoutrements of vetting people and putting folks on blast when they don't do what they were supposed to do. It needs to be built in. Elder care services. Building roads and building roads up, particularly where farming is concerned. Customer service, where, where clean, excuse me, customer service where a clear and direct impact on the, uh, dollar, on, on the profit is concerned. So you not only want to come in and talk about how important it is to render quality service, but you need to be able to to uh, demonstrate how it directly impacts the dollar. People need to see that. Repatriation services. Truck driving schools. A sister friend of mine uh, owns a 18 rig truck in the States and she's interested in something like this once she comes to Ghana. Food production. We need more of that. Personal or private security. For those of you who have a penchant for that or you have some martial arts skills or self-defense skills, this may be something you want to look at. Tropical fish or exotic fish and all the accoutrements that come with that. If you have attempted to locate tropical fish shop in Ghana, <laughs> you'll know that this is definitely a good business idea. Professional or private chef. Storage facilities. When was the last time you saw a storage facility in Ghana? This is something that I have never seen yet. Great idea. Martial arts. Uh, I found a brother, they're not hard, they're very hard to come by, who is now providing martial arts for a school in Kasawa. He's teaching 30 of the students and several of the staff members. More of this is needed. How about this one? Rest area slash truck stop. Y'all been going up and down the roads. How many rest areas have you seen? How many truck stops have you seen? I did. Yeah, right. Laundromat. <laughs> Amusement park or entertainment. And these would be things like bowling, miniature golf, yep. bumper cars, billiards room, and so on and so forth. Tow trucks, borehole trucks. Something that we need more of, especially borehole trucks. When I first came to Ghana, there were a lot of internet cafes, and then they kind of faded out with the advent of everyone and their cousin having a smartphone. But these internet cafes, especially where there's a print center, are still very much needed. Um, now, I want to ask you this. What businesses can arise out of the corruption that you see? Necessity is the mother of invention. And so when you are engaging people and you see that there's a penchant for folks to try to get over on you, ask yourself, what business can I develop that would address this? Necessity is the mother of invention. So I just wanted to share these things with you. I'm very happy to be here this evening. My flagship platform is called the Wellness Community. We migrated off of WhatsApp on May 11th of this year, so we are now on OnJoss, which is similar to WhatsApp but better and it was developed by Cameroonian brothers. And so I want to admonish all of you who have social media platforms to progressively, unapologetically, look for those platforms that's been developed by our brothers and sisters and get your groups on their post haste. Thank you so much. I'm happy to give you my contact information once the program is over. Fantastic, let's give a round of applause.
So we just got a confirmation that we're going to have our brother lawyer here to go over some legal things with you. You know, when I finished uh, college, two things I remember uh, out of all the four years. One was you need um, uh, an accountant and a lawyer. Um, so basically that's, you know, what I do in Ghana. Whenever I move, I move lawyers to make sure that they help me to interpret some of the things that we need to do, as I was saying earlier. You know, we got to we have to be sharp, okay? We have to be real sharp. So uh, he's on the way, and isn't he graduated from Howard University, and he has a big law firm here. So let's hope we can get through this traffic and get here. So we're moving full speed ahead. This particular brother, um, been working with him for years. Really happy that he's here. He always make time for us because he's dealing in an area that's very crucial to our survival, and that is food sovereignty. Okay, we have a lot of food we're importing into Africa. We currently import $45 billion worth of food into Africa, okay? Mostly white rice and white European and Asian products, and it's killing us. And the Bill Gates and the Monsanto's got together and said, hey, let's just take this some um, genetically modified food stuff to Africa and kill them off and then take over the seed industry. So our brother, Brother Edwin, he's fighting, um, actually they got a lawsuit in to counter this foolishness that the big money people brought here and they paid off some people to push the GMO in Africa. So our brother's a warrior, he's been taking the lead and fighting to make sure that, uh, first of all, he promote organic growing food like we're doing in the Volta region, as our brother uh, had spoken, and myself in the Central region. All, many of us were growing organic food, but there's a demon that has come to Ghana and Africa called the GMO and, it's, and they got a lot of bucks, but we got big mind. So let's welcome our warrior that's going to give us some insight to how we can protect ourselves from these um, uh, demons. Bro Brother uh, Edwin. Hey, greetings, brothers and sisters. And uh, Akwaba to all of you. Um, as uh, Brother David introduced me, I volunteer for a civil society organization called Food Sovereignty Ghana. And we've been at the forefront of advocating for organic food systems and um, just for people to realize the, the, the power and um, everything that is in food. You know, we've overlooked food as a people, but um, our enemies haven't. You know, our enemies have realized that food um, can be a weapon if you program it in the right way. It can be a weapon when you control its distribution. Um, there's a myth on the planet that we are overpopulated and that there's not enough land um, to grow food, but that's a myth. Um, there's enough land, abundant land, now that you're traveling through Ghana, you'll see it. You'll see, as far as I can see, land upon land upon land. But we've been deceived into thinking that uh, our food must come from far and wide. Our food must come through the, the ports, through the airports. Um, but we at Food Sovereignty Ghana feel that food must come from as close as possible um, a source. Um, and this recent um, COVID issue has shown us that you can't afford to depend on food coming through your ports. That any small rumble in the geopolitics of this planet and um, you know, people will suffer. So I'm encouraging a lot of you who are moving back home um, to be thinking that food is very key. Food is, is, is all we have. I think uh, we're here when we had to wait for you to have a meal. Why? Because food is important. And if you hadn't eaten, a lot of you probably wouldn't have not come to this room. They would have continued and done what you wanted. Um, but that shows the importance of food. So organic food is important. And coming home, think about ways in which you can get into organic food production. So I'd like to you know, big up all the people in the room who are doing that, you know, the people at Sogakope, Restoration Farms, Asasipa, David, because if we grow our own food, then you control, they say growing your own food is like printing your own money. You know, you, you, you're empowering yourself, so you don't have to depend on someone for your dignity. If you think about it, you could be the greatest joker, you could be the richest man, but when you have to beg someone to eat, your dignity comes down. You have to seek for help, um, you have to lower your, 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 your self-esteem because you're looking for something that they have a power over you and that should never be. The seeds that our ancestors gave us um, were supposed to be a common good. Now because of the geopolitics of the world, 
people are controlling seeds and they want to patent seeds and make seeds such a commercial entity. And with the whole capitalism and how things are distributed, obviously some will have and many will not have. But the indigenous knowledge of our ancestors, like Dr. Asai was talking about, is very important and we must preserve that. So the indigenous seeds, the indigenous foods that our ancestors ate, that's what we must um, promote to grow. Currently, because of commerce, there's an over-reliance on you know, the white rice, the maize, because industry needs these foods and so human beings and farmers are forced to grow these foods because at the end of the day, they have a commercial value um, for some company. But Food sovereignty is about eating what you want. Um, and food is not just about the availability of food as in food security. It's about that the food, was the food grown in a responsible manner? That the food that you're eating, was it grown with harmful pesticides? Did those pesticides pollute the river or the water body um, where you live? And all these decisions go into um, the sort of food we should be eating. Is the food nutritious? So what is nutritious to um, a diet in Europe doesn't necessarily uh, help you and protect you here. You know, you have to go back to the indigenous things. So the wintia, the dawadawa, the prekese, there are a host of local uh, seeds, grains, fruits, vegetables, um, that will give you the power, that will boost your immune system in these times. So a lot of you coming back home, uh, think about ways that you can start growing food for yourself and growing food and, and, and selling to other people. Uh, now there's a premium on food that is organic. Our ancestors never knew anything about the word organic. Organic was how we lived. So organic was, you know, making sure that we are in tune with nature. If you're grown organic, then you can't be spraying cancerous chemicals on the soil. Because soil uh, is a living entity. And all the living organisms in the soil, the earthworms, the microorganisms, they, they, they form the, the wealth of the soil. And our ancestors knew this, so there was a very measured ways of dealing with the with the earth because we had to be sustainable and we must respect that indigenous knowledge today we've discarded and thrown it away as if it doesn't matter you know there was a reason why our ancestors went to the farm every morning and plucked food from the ground and didn't decide to make a store at the house and go to the farm on the weekend you know save time let's just chill and relax because the value of food that you remove from the soil in the morning is much higher than you're going to get in any supermarket and that's what's going to affect the, the, the health and nutrition and your immune system. So when you come home, like Dr. Carnita was saying, let's absorb indigenous knowledge. Let's learn to balance what it is that we need to use and discard what is not useful to us. But grow your own food, support Food Sovereignty Ghana. We have a website, www.foodsovereigntyghana.org. It's all one word, Food Sovereignty Ghana, G-H-A-N-A. -A. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Um, but we need support. We've taken the government to court um, on certain issues because it's in court, we won't go into so much detail. But basically, we're against the, the way that the government is just going for this genetically modified way of farming um, when we haven't thought of the long term. If, if organic food has a premium today, it's because we realize that there's a nutritional value um, on organic food. So if agrarian societies like Africa, the future is for us to be able to control um, the, the, the market of organic food and to grow food that builds our bodies. So Food Sovereignty Ghana is um, your humble servant. We continue to uh, volunteer. The work that we do is on a strictly volunteer basis and we try to speak to different groups um, that are progressive minded. And when you come, a lot of our brothers and sisters um, see you as holding a, a wealth of knowledge and experience that they didn't get. So it's important for you to come back and to repeat some of these lessons, to let them understand the importance that out there where you're coming from, there is a premium on organic food. That food that doesn't, hasn't grown with chemicals it has a different price. And then work backwards from that. Why should that be? And should Ghanaian farmers be earning more money for their produce or should we join the mainstream, just spray the farms? When you go to farms, farmers will tell you they don't see snails anymore, they don't see mushrooms on their farms. These are all signs that we are killing the ecosystem that supports our very selves. And then we'll stand somewhere and be confused and wondering what happened to ourselves. So we cannot discard indigenous knowledge. I want to thank Bomani and his team um, for bringing people down and reconnecting. All of you are heroes, all of you are victorious. Um, you all represent an ancestor who may have never dreamed that they would have the dignity to come back to these shores. And uh, I want you to clap for yourselves. Thank you very much.
and long live Ghana. Very good, very good. Absolutely. Um, we have the capacity, um, our time has come to really um, take Africa to where it belongs, and that is total freedom. Um, and it's going to take us working together, networking, believing in ourselves. Um, our sister uh, was talking about the different business opportunity. You may want to consider one of my books, The Black Guy to Invest in in Africa. We cover some of the um, opportunities. Um, we're also working close with our brothers and sisters in ECOWAS. That's the 19 countries within ECOWAS that we can sell our products and network. Um, we are currently uh, working with a group in Liberia that call uh, Opportunities in Africa, and we will be importing things from Liberia and exporting things to Ghana. So we can connect the dots. If you have products and services wherever you're located, whether you're in the Caribbean, where you, wherever you are, you can, we can market, help you market your products and services here. So that's what it's all about. We got to move our products, we got to move our services. And we can do this, and we have to keep our economic in the family, okay? We have to plug the leak. What do I mean by plugging the leak? You ask any plumber, if there's, a, if there's a leak, you need to plug it. So we are leaking our resources by not, what? Uh, keeping it in the family. That's how we plug the leak. Make sure that you buy black and it'll come back. We got great products in Africa. Great products in Africa. Okay, so we're gonna introduce you to another great sister that um, I was introduced to and I'm really blessed and it's not coincident that she's here, it's by Providence, okay? She's a, a, a British-born Ghanaian, uh, Oxford grad. Um, her name is Sister Lorraine Wright. Uh, she brings a lot to the table, and when I read her bio, it's five paragraphs. So I'll be talking forever just to introduce this lady. Uh, but I, I love one thing that she said in the bio. It was about um, agri, crowd, crowd farming. I mean, that really touched my heart. I really wanted to hear a lot about that. So let's meet this goddess, Sister Lorraine Wright. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, and thank you very much once again for having me here. Appreciate it. And do forgive me in advance. I will be running off straight after because I'm in between engagements um, at the moment. Um, so as he's mentioned, I'm a British-born Ghanaian. I'm back and forth between Ghana and the UK. I'm normally based in the UK. But often, this is my home. You know, my parents are Ghanaian. I love what's going on on the continent. The government in Ghana talk about, right now, the motto is grow in Ghana, grow with Ghana. You have to be on this continent to really understand and be in Ghana to understand how you're gonna grow with Ghana. On the continent today, there's 1.2 billion individuals. And I really love what our brother was talking about when it came to food sovereignty. One of the biggest challenges we have on the African continent is also food security. And that's one of the angles that the company that I work for, Grow For Me, are all about focused on, 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 on solving. In 2050, there's going to be 2.5 billion Africans on the continent. Right now, we cannot feed the mouths of the 1.2 billion individuals, right? So how in just 30 years time, are we going to be able to feed the 2.5 billion individuals that are projected to be here on this continent? These are the business opportunities we've been speaking about that will help to plug those gaps. And one of the things that Grow For Me does, and this is the company that I work for, Grow For Me are all about impacting the lives of smallholder farmers here in Ghana and looking at how we can improve their livelihoods and close the gap when it comes to food security. When you think about a, a farmer on the African continent, you think about the age group, a middle-aged to older age farmer, right? What is happening right now with urbanization and the lack of funding that exists in farming is that typically where farmers age, their children who they will normally hand off to are running to the cities to go and do city jobs. So they're no longer doing the farming jobs that you know, they'll be handing off to because those guys are not seeing money in the farming communities. So we are here to help plug the gap and provide the investment into the farming space, especially with smallholder farmers, to help that plug, plug the gap to ensure sustainability in the farming community. So growth for me are all about enabling people like yourselves in the diaspora to get involved in agriculture without getting your hands dirty. 
So you might be there, I saw a lot of people, I used to live in Chicago myself, so I've seen people from Chicago, Atlanta, etc., all over the world. You can be there, or you can be here on the continent, or in Ghana, and we at Grow For Me will partner with smallholder farmers and yourselves, you provide the much needed resources and we will grow on your behalf. Now there's a lot of products that our brother was talking about and crops that we grow. We do grow uh, maize, we do grow rice, we do grow pineapple. Those are fundamentally the things that we do grow. And you're absolutely right, commercially right now, this is a lot of things that's happening here. But what we've given people is the opportunity to get involved in agriculture from the grassroots. So with as little as 35 US dollars or the equivalent, you can sponsor crops with Grow For Me. Our smallholder farmers will grow that on your behalf and there's a profit sharing model that would exist, right? So what will happen is you provide your funding, we will grow, we work with the farmer. At the end, once the, the crops have been harvested, we will then trade those crops to generate a profit. The profit will then be split between you as a sponsor. You will be entitled to 50%, that's five zero percent of the funding, of the profits rather. The farmer will get 35% of the profit and Grow For Me as a platform will get 15%. Think about it as an Uber for agriculture, right? You get into a car that you don't own, you're using a driver you don't necessarily know. This is a very similar method. I love the fact that the brother at the back said he's got access to 500 acres of land. That's amazing. I was like, wow, right? And that is fundamentally one of the issues that exists. We have a lot of virgin land that exists in Ghana, underused. And we were looking for ways and means to cultivate that land, but it needs investment, right? It needs you and I to plug the gap and put the money in there. So growth for me is all about working with farmers that have access to certain land and they will grow on your behalf, we will then work with them to harvest, to trade, to sell those crops, and you'll generate a profit. And you can do that from the comfort of your own home. So do check us out, that's growforme.com online. You can also contact us. The reason why I was connected here is because I think one of your sisters in, in this family, our name is, there you go, has connected us, right? Um, so thank you uh, once again for that. And I really love also the business opportunities um, that was mentioned here. Myself, um, I'm involved in a number of different businesses here in Ghana. I have a beauty salon. Um, I also have a number of Uber cars in the system. So I shipped over cars into Ghana, got them involved in the system. So these are certain things that can happen. You're not driving the cars yourself, but you're allowing other drivers to, you're creating jobs for drivers that are here who can have access to your cars. Um, they, could, they can pay you every single week for the privilege of using those cars and they're also generating an income themselves. So there's certain different opportunities absolutely that are right and exist here in Ghana. So once again, I'm Lorraine Wright and I'm encouraging everyone to grow in Ghana and grow with Ghana by the various opportunities that have been mentioned on the panel today. So thank you very much once again. We I'm really thankful that you uh, came to share with us. And of course, you know, now that you're a family, you know, we'll be seeing more of you, all of us. We're connecting, you know, this is family. What I said in the beginning, this is a family reunion, okay? And the family, we got two families. We got the biological family, and we got the spiritual family. We understand that, right? The biological family, we love them. Okay, but the spiritual family is the one that we that's going to do the work. Okay, so you got to remember, you know, the spiritual family, those that dedicated to freeing this continent by any means necessary. Okay, we have to free this continent, and we got to make sure that we prepare ourselves to survive at the top. What do I mean about surviving at the top? Okay. When you start controlling billions of dollars, you got to know how to control yourself with that, okay? You got to know how to control yourself when you have control over the masses, okay? You got to know how to control, you got to be masters over this economic system. We can't let money rule us. We have to rule money, okay? And then one of the things that we must do is overcome the need for uh, the, the capitalist system of economic uh, control. We have to overcome that. The late Peter Tar said, the day the dollar died, we will love each other. That's a great song, okay? I love that song. 
So when the dollar died, the CD got to come up, okay? When the dollar died, the narrow got to come up, okay? When the dollar died, the gold coin got to come up. When the dollar died, the corn, the oil, all of the things that we produce got to come up. We got to forget about the dollar, okay? I get dollars from America, but I ain't depending on it, okay? That's my reparation. I get it, okay? I use it to build my Africa. Okay, I use it to build my effort, but if the dollar die, I'm praying that the dollar die. <laughs> okay, because the dollar must die so that we can live. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Right. Show you right. <laughs> because that's how we're going to live. Yeah. We're going to live. So we got a beautiful sister coming on board, and of course we got a lot of talking about. We're talking about farming and all of that. But remember now, that's the basic needs. You know, was it Maslow basic need, five basic need? No. We got to have food. See, I live, on a la I live on land. I wake up in the morning, and all I hear is the sound of birds, okay? And I hear myself thinking, and I see food growing. I, I harvest rainwater. I have solar energy. I want to share that with you. The blessing that I would live, I wake up without depending on money. I have money, but I don't depend on it. It's not mine. It don't make me rich. What makes me rich is having brothers and sisters that's coming alive that I can relate to, that I can talk to. Brothers like Bumani, brothers like um, uh, the Coke, the priest over here, Bumani, and everyone here. That's what makes me rich. So let's, just, let's, let's listen to this, this rich sister that's going to talk to us about, um, and I love her name, you know. Um, one good thing about what I do is I meet brothers and sisters and I help connect the dots. Um, sister has a organic earth home that she's gonna talk to us about. Organic earth home. See, we all gotta own our home. You see, in my book, I, I write about how we got to eliminate mortgage and rent payment, okay? We have to own our own by any means necessary. We need to get some land if it's just taking a, a container and turn it into a house. By any means necessary. You see the birds, I watch them, they build their nest together. So we have to build our houses together. That's the basic of freedom. When you don't pay rent and you don't pay mortgage, you are on the road to success. No one can ever evict you. And no one can ever trick you, okay? So to take your time, you start. My first home in Ghana, I built, we built one room at a time. And I moved in, they laughed at me. David is living in an uncompleted house. Ha, ha, ha. They ain't laughing now. You know what I'm saying? They ain't laughing now. Ha, ha, ha. David went on to build more houses and more houses. So this particular sister, her name is Kwana Strong. Uh, that's welcome, why not strong? Let's give a strong round of applause. I just want to say thank you for inviting me on this panel to speak to you today. I'm coming to speak to you from the perspective of um, being here for just one year in Ghana full time. Great. So um, a lot of you said uh, you this is your first time on the continent or the second time on the continent or you're looking to repatriate to Ghana and make this your full-time home. So I'm speaking to you from that perspective. Um, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I've been in Ghana now. Um, my one-year anniversary was December 16th. And I've been traveling back and forth to Ghana since 2008. So the experience that I'm having now is a very different experience from being a tourist in Ghana. I'm here full-time. I'm um, eking out a living um, to support myself, and I'm also helping others who are coming to the continent that are looking here, looking to um, uh, transition here and settle here full time. And my company's name is Organic Earth Homes and Lifestyles, and I build homes from uh, clay, sand, water, and a small amount of cement. Uh, so if you're looking to build a home that is um, using the local resources that are here in Ghana, um, you can do it. I also teach classes where you can learn how to build these type of homes for yourself, or even if you're looking to start um, a business, 
uh, using this type of technology. Also, uh, the homes are organic and toxic free. I'm also in the process of researching so I can minimize the cement that I even use now. Uh, we use somewhere between five to 8% cement in our building uh, construction. So I would like to even make that percentage a lot less uh, because the dependency here on cement in, in Ghana is, is, is just ridiculous. Um, when I first started building my house um, about a year and a half ago, uh, a bag of cement was 33 CDs. Um, now a bag of cement is upwards of 54, 55 CDs. So um, a lot of people think that you can come here and uh, build <laughs> for nothing, <laughs> but you can't. Material prices fluctuate literally from week to week. Yeah, week to week. Um, cement blocks, iron rods, uh, the bag of cement, all those um, prices fluctuate from week to week. I also help people uh, search for land and legitimate land, drama-free land, uh, chief drama-free land, uh, and all the other things that go along with that. You'll find that everybody sells land, everybody can get you land for cheap, Everybody knows the chief. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> and it's, it's just not true. It's not easy. And it's not easy. It's not an easy process. And I had to learn it the hard way. So because of that, I started the company to make the transition easier for each and every one of you. So you don't have to go through the trials and tribulations that I went through um, when I first came here to Ghana. As far as land is concerned, um, I do source land throughout Ghana, and I have a team of professionals, um, Ghanaians and diasporans, who work with me on sourcing land for people who are coming to the continent. Um, the, the young lady, um, Sister Lorraine, who mentioned about Grow For Me, um, it's an excellent program. It's something that was newly introduced to me as well. And I'm working with a group of diasporans from all over the US that what we've done is we've joined together as a cooperative. It's about 14 of us. And we will participate in that Grow For Me program as a cooperative. And there's also not only crops, um, uh, Grow For Me programs, but you can also become a member of a cooperative for poultry farm, turkey, um, pigs, uh, 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 small chickens, because to, sm to sell chickens, uh, the, the, the young chickens, you can sell those as well. So there's cooperatives for that as well as the cooperatives for the Grow For Me program that the, uh, the sister mentioned. Also, if you're looking for temporary housing, a lot of times when you come here, um, you, you buy your land, you want to build, and it takes time. So you need temporary housing, maybe for six months, maybe for a year. So um, I also help people to source housing where they can stay during the time that they're sourcing land or they're building. So these are all services that my company offers. And I also help um, with people who have bought land who've come to me and said, listen, I have a lot of issues. We haven't gotten the right documentation. Some people have found themselves with fraudulent documentation, and I help troubleshoot those situations as well. So I have customers from the UK, from Canada, from the United States, that I stand here in Ghana on their behalf and work through their situations um, that they may be encountering. Um, the sister here mentioned about services. Well, those are some of the services that you can offer. Because if you have the experience, on the ground experience, and someone is um, back home, say Canada, UK, or the United States, and they're not here, they need someone to stand in for them. A person that has uh, works with integrity, who's transparent, and someone that you can trust. And those uh, qualities um, are not easy to come by. So, and I provide those services. So, 
I just welcome each and every one of you. Ghana is a great place to be. There's a lot of opportunities here, and welcome. Appreciate it. So, family, um, let's give the panelists a great round of applause for coming and being here and sharing. So, we're going to close out, but we're going to stay together. I want to thank Brother Bumani. Yes, Bumani. Can we do some Q&A? Yes, Q&A. Thank you very much. So, if you have any questions or if you, you know, want to direct to anyone up here, you can do that. That's another mic. Uh, but again, we was talking about investment. Brother Bumani has some uh, great investment opportunities with, with the land that he has. I think it's in Winneba. Uh, of yeah. course. Yeah, outside of Winneba. Yeah. Outside of Winneba. And of course, the, um, our lawyer is on the way, so after we close out, hopefully we can introduce him. His address is in the book, uh, so you can contact him, and uh, he don't charge you anything for consultation. You can just call him and just mention the conference, and he will give you some legal advice. Also, we have the Ghana Investment Promotion Center uh, uh, address in the book. These are the government people that give you the guideline on what it takes to become an investor in Ghana. So you make sure that you contact and do your homework so you can know the layout of everything legally so that um, you don't have to uh, get caught up in anything that, um, you know, that's not um, legal. So, any questions? Any comments? Uh, just raise your hand and we'll get you the mic. Okay, over here. Brother Yasai. Yes, sir. Yes, greetings once again. This is uh, a question for our sister to your right, David. Uh, you had mentioned fiber and task rabbit. Can you explain that? I don't understand what that is. Sure. Fiber and task rabbits are sites that are set up to help people identify directly people like handyman services, people who are painters, uh, roofers, all these different types of people, uh, uh, even uh, what is the uh, butler services, any type of thing. So it's, and it's more like the average person, the, the person who's self-employed or who has a micro uh, business. So when you're looking to get something done, maybe you need uh, your dogs walked or what have you, they're vetted through Fiverr and TaskRabbit. So it's a one-stop, go-to shop to find an array of people who you can then hire and then they're vetted to be on that site and then you're able to also put information on there in terms of what your experience was like for them, just like you can rate books on Amazon, and then they're also able to rate you as a customer. So they're excellent websites uh, when you're looking for someone and maybe you don't have the luxury of word of mouth. Okay, lastly, you mentioned Food Sovereignty Ghana. Can you give that website? Oh, that's um, www.foodsover. I E N G E N G sovereignty. That's very difficult word to spell. S O V E R E I G N T Y G H A N A dot org. Food sovereignty Ghana dot org. And if you look food sovereignty on Facebook too, we have a page. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I'll also send it back here. Are there any plans or initiatives for solid waste management for recycling? I don't know if I missed it. Uh, I've seen that in Ghana. Uh, there was a sister that uh, we met at one of the Echo Fairs some time back, and they had. Um, um, Sherry. They were, it was Sherry? Sherry. Okay. Can you elaborate on it a little bit? Or? I can get you her contact information if you see me after the program. Very good. <clears throat> About waste management and sanitation, my company, Palma Health, we've developed a simple cellular digester that can manage waste in micro units instead of in very huge form. And it helps to do away with a lot of burning 
those who live in Accra, you see a lot of people burning things in the morning, which increases the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So we have a system, so you can contact us and we can work together towards it. Okay, take a couple more. Two more. Okay, so if not, we want to uh, thank everyone for coming. Uh, we also want to encourage you to... Uh, yes, I also want to make a really quick comment. Thank you for letting me say something. So when you're coming here, you know, it's huge, huge, huge to be a team player. In Ghana, we have something called SUSU. It's not the only thing, it's not only in Ghana. But a SUSU technically is a group, but in Ghana in particular, it's a financial group. And it's where people come together to support each other financially. Our platform has a SUSU. And in the last five years, we have loaned each other money every Monday to the tune of about 270,000 CDs or roughly $45,000. That's just how powerful SUSUs can be. So the extent to which you can come here and also look at partnering and neighboring and networking with each other to create that type of financial uh, uh, safety net is also very, very key. Yes, that was SUSUs work. Um, two of my daughters come to me. Uh, and, and they just request one or two cities to put in a SUSU and they she ended 15 years young. So again, um, so many things that we can do here. It's unlimited, okay? We have unlimited wealth. We have unlimited opportunities. I want to thank the vendors for coming out, the Alkaline Water, uh, Chief No More and the family. Please take note of the um, vendors. We have um, a whole organic farm with the, with the um, Herbs of Africa, we want to encourage you to get a copy of my new book, Healing and Rejuvenating Herbs of Africa. I put it all over social media that this is the vaccine, you understand, and as my brother Jawanza would say, if you take the vaccine, you'll turn to Maxine. So uh, we uh, encourage you to get the book and stay strong so that we don't have to worry about this boogeyman. So if nothing else, we want to thank everyone, thank the creator, we'd like to ask Dr. Sarah to close us out with the... Uh, we do have seeds. Also, we, we supply seeds to assist our farmers to cut off Monsanto monsters. So certainly uh, we, are, we are very, and we work very closely to, uh, our, with our brothers in the Volta region, okay? But to uh, the Oliakim, you know, uh, we are working closely to grow food. I encourage you to visit uh, the Volta region. Our brothers is here, network with them. And of course, it's Cape Coast also. Um, uh, network with our brother uh, Atua Yasa and our brother at the factory in Timur. Visit one of the biggest Timur factories. So we got a lot of business that's exploding. Okay, and again, I thank Bumani because he's helping us to get land and to build houses and work in community, uh, community. So we got so much going on. So with that, uh, I'd like to turn everything over to Dr. Sorry for a close out prayer and remind you just to network after this. You know, um, and we will continue to keep the family together. Okay, forever. Okay. Let us all affirm by responding, Ashe. We humbly affirm that our work and sacrifice builds a great African nation beyond geographical boundaries. Ashe. We humbly affirm that our work and sacrifices build an African family that is spiritually and materially successful as a culturally dependent and efficient unit. We humbly affirm that our work and sacrifices builds an African child who is generational and continuous in the line of African majesty. <laughs> Let us affirm by each sign, conference, and successfully held we add up to our energy to build and establish a destiny for Africa. That we thank our Creator and all our ancestors, living and dead, for giving us the wisdom and courage that this successful venture has come to a pleasant end. I say, I say, I say. Okay. Give yourself a round of applause.